Apple TV. Apple TV is a digital media player developed and sold by Apple Incorporated. It is a small network appliance and entertainment device designed to play digital content from the iTunes Store, Netflix, Hulu Plus, YouTube and Vevo, along with the TV Everywhere portals of several cable and broadcast networks, and the video subscription portals of three of the four major North American sports leagues. MLB TV, NBA League Pass and NHL Game Center. The device also plays content from any Mac OS X or Windows computer running iTunes on an enhanced definition or high definition widescreen television. Apple offered a preview of the device in September 2006, and began shipping it the following March. It initially shipped with a 40 GB hard disk. A 160 GB version was introduced two months later, and the earlier model was ultimately discontinued. In September 2010, Apple announced the second generation version of the Apple TV. About one quarter of the size and one third of the price of the original Apple TV, the new device could stream rented content from iTunes and video from computers or iOS devices via AirPlay. This version no longer had a hard drive. However, it does have an undocumented internal 8GB flash storage, speculated to be used for smoother playback of streamed media. All content is drawn from online or locally connected sources. The third generation of the device was introduced at an Apple event on March 7, 2012, with new features such as higher resolution, 1080p, and a new user interface. On January 28, 2013, Apple released a third generation Reverend A, which included component changes. Notable competitors include WDTV, Roku. Amazon Fire TV, Google TV, and Chromecast, consoles and media hubs such as the PlayStation 3 Quarters, Xbox X360 Slash One and Nintendo Wii Wii U and late model TiVo DVR systems, as well as internal smart TV systems and Blu-ray players from companies such as Vizio, Sharp, Sony, Samsung, LG and others. History Original design Apple TV was unveiled as a work in progress called ITV at a press conference in San Francisco, California on September 12, 2006. Apple CEO Steve Jobs demonstrated a modified front row interface using the Apple remote. Industry experts described the appliance as a short Mac Mini. Jobs announced that Apple would start taking pre-orders for Apple TV on January 9, 2007 at the Macworld Conference and Expo. The name ITV was originally going to be used to keep it in line with the rest of their iBase products, iMac, iPod, etc., but was not used because television broadcaster ITV holds the rights to the name in the UK and threatened to take legal action against Apple. Apple TV started shipping on March 21, 2007. Apple released a 160GB model on May 31, 2007. It discontinued the 40GB version on September 14, 2009. At Macworld 2008 on January 15, 2008, Jobs announced a major, and free, software upgrade to the Apple TV. Dubbed Take Two, the upgrade turned the Apple TV into a standalone device that no longer required a computer running iTunes on Mac OS X or Windows to stream or sync content to it. Jobs said, Apple TV was designed to be an accessory for iTunes and your computer. It was not what people wanted. We learned what people wanted was movies, movies, movies. The update allowed the device to rent and purchase content from iTunes directly as well as download podcasts and stream photos from Mobile Me, Mac at the time, and FLICKR. Smaller model The second generation Apple TV was unveiled during an Apple press conference on September 1, 2010. The device was now housed in a very small all-black case, about one quarter the size of the original. The new model lacked an internal hard drive and had just enough local storage for buffering purposes. All media was now streamed, instead of synced. In the March 7, 2012 presentation that mainly dealt with a third-generation iPad, Apple CEO Tim Cook announced a third version of the Apple TV. 
The new Apple TV is externally identical to the previous generation and includes a single core A5 processor. It also supports 1080p content from iTunes and Netflix. Features Apple TV allows consumers to use an HD TV set to view photos, play music and watch video originating from limited internet services or a local network. The first generation, white, had iTunes, FLICKR, Mobileam slash Mac and YouTube. The second generation added Netflix. Both models supported downloading streaming podcasts. Supported internet media services include Users can access the iTunes Store directly through Apple TV to rent movies and TV shows and stream audio and video podcasts. While the first generation of the Apple TV could download content, the second generation lacks a hard drive, and thus cannot store purchased content. Users who wish to purchase content on the Apple TV may do so, but cannot download directly to the Apple TV. Content must be streamed live or downloaded by iTunes onto a device with storage capability, personal computer, iPhone, iPad, etc. Since 2008, podcasts have been served on the Apple TV as other kinds of video, as opposed to in RSS and similar feeds. Until mid-March 2009, the Apple TV was the only way to purchase HD iTunes content. Apple TV can display photos from FLICKR and iCloud in a slideshow, with automatic cross-dissolve transitions, and optionally with the Ken Burns effect. Netflix streaming integration was added in the September 2010 revision. Hulu Plus integration was added on August 2012. YouTube and Vimeo videos can be viewed on the Apple TV via included apps. A YouTube account is not required, but allows a user to set personalized options such as favorites, Rotten Tomatoes review syndication and ratings offered per title available for rent. Rotten Tomatoes account holders cannot log in, and no personalized options are available. NBA TV and MLB TV allow access to league scores, statistics, and their accompanying subscription services. Apple TV does not support user-defined RSS audio, video and text feeds. Watch ESPN, HBO Geo, Sky News, Kroongirl and Kello were added on June 19, 2013. Watch ESPN and HBO Geo require TV Everywhere provider authentication, with Kroongirl and Kello allowing paid subscription via Apple's payment systems, and Sky News available without any authentication or cost to users in the UK, Ireland and United States. Disney Channel, Disney XD, requires TV Everywhere, Bevo. Smithsonian Networks in the Weather Channel, Forecasts, Weather News and Regional Video Forecasts, Integration was added on August 27, 2013. Bloomberg, Crackle, Watch ABC, Requires Subscription, and KOR TV were added on December 11, 2013. The WWE Network was added around the time of its late February 2014 launch, along with Red Bull TV and TV4 for Swedish viewers. History. Lifetime and A&E were added in April 2014. Parental controls allow consumers to limit access to Internet media service content, via the restrictions setting. Individual services can be turned off, for example, to reduce clutter, and their icons can be rearranged via the tap-and-hold technique align iOS. Internet media is split into four categories, Internet photos, YouTube, podcasts, and purchase and rental. Each of the categories is configured by a parental control of show, hide, or ask to prompt for a four-digit preset code. In addition, movies, TV shows, music and podcasts can be restricted by rating. Local sources Apple TV can sync or stream photos, music and videos from a computer running iTunes. A user can connect a computer on a local network to maintain a central home media library of ripped CD, DVD or HD content, provide direct connectivity to photo organization software such as iPhoto, limit home video access to a local network only, play internet radio, or preload content on Apple TV to be used later as a non-networked video player. For users who wish to connect the Apple TV to a computer, Synchronization and streaming modes are supported.
Apple TV in synchronization mode works in a way similar to the iPod. It is paired with an iTunes library on a single computer and can synchronize with that library, copying all or selected content to its own hard drive. Apple TV need not remain connected to the network after syncing. Photos can sync from iPhoto, Aperture, or from a hard disk folder on a Mac, or Adobe Photoshop album, Photoshop Elements, or from a hard disk folder in Windows. Apple TV can also function as a peer-to-peer -peer digital media player, streaming content from iTunes libraries and playing the content over the network. First-generation Apple TVs can stream content from up to five computers or iTunes libraries. Also, five Apple TVs can be linked to the same iTunes library. The second generation onwards of Apple TV allows users to stream content from more than one iTunes library. These additional iTunes libraries can be on the same or on different computers. This is possible when Apple TV and every iTunes library from which you want to stream content meet all of the following conditions. 1. The Apple TV and iTunes library you are streaming from are all on the same local network. 2. They use the iTunes home sharing feature. And 3. Have the same home sharing Apple ID. Supported formats Apple TV supports the following audio, video, and picture formats. Attempts to sync unsupported content to Apple TV will draw an error message from iTunes. The first and second generation Apple TV's video output can be set to either 1080i or 1080p. However, this resolution is limited to the user interface and the viewing of photographs, all other content is simply upscaled to those resolutions. Those models cannot play 1080i or 1080p video content, for example HD camera video. The third generation does support 1080p output. Apple offers H264 1080p movies and video podcasts on iTunes. In comparison, Blu-ray disc films are 1080p H264 or VC1 video encoded at rates of up to 14 bit s. Apple TV's audio chip supports 7.1 surround sound, and some high-definition rentals from iTunes are offered with Dolby Digital 5.1 surround sound. There is an Apple TV export option in QuickTime which allows content in some formats that the device does not support to be easily re-encoded. Applications that use QuickTime to export media can use this. For example iMovies Share Menu, iTunes Advanced Menu and some third-party content conversion tools. Connectivity Apple TV outputs video through an HDMI port. While the first generation also had component video and RCA stereo audio ports, they were removed in the second generation. The device does not have RCA composite video or FRF connectors. Of the original Apple TV, reviewers wrote that Apple is future-proofing, and if you do not have HDTV now, you will in the future. The product does not come with audio or video cables. Audio is supported through the optical and HDMI ports. The previous Apple TV also had analog, RCA connector, audio ports. The device connects to the Internet and local networks through an Ethernet or Wi-Fi connection. The device also has a micro USB port but this is reserved for service in diagnostics. On the previous Apple TV, media files could be transferred directly onto the device by syncing with another computer. Once content is stored on the device, an Internet connection would no longer be needed to view content. AirPlay AirPlay allows iOS devices or an airport-enabled computer with the iTunes music player to send a stream of music to multiple, 3 to 6, in typical conditions, stereos connected to an Airport Express, the audio-only antecedent of Apple TV, or Apple TV. The Airport Express streaming media capabilities use Apple's Remote Audio Output Protocol, RAOP, a proprietary variant of RTSP-RTP. Using WDS bridging, the Airport Express can allow AirPlay functionality, as well as Internet access, file and print sharing etc. across a larger distance in a mixed environment of wired and up to 10 wireless clients. 
speakers attached to an AirPort Express or Apple TV can be selected from within the remote iPhone iPod Touch program, allowing full AirPlay compatibility. See Remote Control section below. A compatible Mac running OS X Mountain Lion can wirelessly mirror its screen to an Apple TV through AirPlay mirroring while one running OS X Mavericks can also extend its display with AirPlay display. Remote Control Apple TV can be controlled by many infrared remote controls or paired with the included Apple remote to prevent interference from other remotes. Either kind of remote can control playback volume, but for music only. The Apple wireless keyboard is supported on the second generation Apple TV and later using the built-in Bluetooth. The consumer has the ability to control media playback, navigate menus and input text and other information. Third-party keyboards that use the Apple layout may also be compatible. On July 10, 2008, Apple released Remote, a free iOS application that allows the iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad to control the iTunes library on the Apple TV via Wi-Fi. Software The original Apple TV ran a modified build of Mac OS X v10.4 Tiger that presented the user with an interface similar to that of Front Row. While this interface was merged back into Mac OS X v10.5 in late 2007, major Apple TV enhancements since then, Take Two, and later, have not been included in front row. Content was organized in six groups, movies, TV shows, music, YouTube, podcasts, and photos, and presented in the initial menu along with a settings option for configuration, including software updates. The included Apple remote was used to navigate through the menus by using the up or down buttons and selecting options with the play button. The left and right buttons were used to perform rewind and fast forward functions while viewing video content and perform previous and next song functionality when selecting audio only content. Like front row on the Mac, the TV shows option allows the user to sort contents by show or date and the movies option also allows the user to view movie trailers for new releases. All video content, including movies, TV shows, music videos, and video podcasts, includes bookmark functionality. Apple TV automatically bookmarks video content midstream to continue playback at a later time. The music submenu offers similar options to those found on an iPod, presenting the available music sorted by artist, album, songs, genres, and composers, as well as offering a shuffle option and listing available audiobooks. As categories are selected with the remote, animated album art is displayed on the side of the display for the contents of the selected category. While playing audio-only content such as music and audio podcasts, Apple TV periodically moves album art and content info on the TV display to prevent burn-in on video displays. From the second generation onwards, Apple TV runs a version of iOS, rather than the modified Mac OS X of the original model. The interface is similar to that of the first generation, with only slight modifications. Modifications and Hacks you can tell the model number of your Apple TV by navigating inside your Apple TV to Settings, then General, and then About, and doing a web search for the model number shown there. For example, if you have model mc 572 ll then you have a second-generation Apple TV. It's important to determine the generation of your device before starting any modification process. Not all modifications work on all generations. Presently there is no way to jailbreak a third generation Apple TV. First generation During the days of the release of the first generation of Apple TV, various non-commercial and commercial hacks became available. These allowed users to remotely access the device, add support for other codecs, install a full-blown copy of Mac OS X Tiger, access the hard drive via USB, use the device to browse the web use non-Apple remote controls, and download metadata from the IMDb. In mid-2008, Firecore released the ATV Flash software, which gives the Apple TV support for other media formats, a web browser, external USB hard drive support, and more. A free and open source alternative, 
ATV USB Creator, does much the same using a simple graphical interface on both Mac and Windows. As of June 2011, Apple does not prevent users from modifying their Apple TVs, but does warn that applying hacks may void the product's warranty. Installing updates for the Apple TV system software typically removes software hacks, but major Apple TV hacks are updated regularly. Most plugins for front row are minor and have not been updated to work with Apple TV running iOS 2X. Awkward TV reports 10 plugins out of 32 have been certified compatible with the Take 2 update. Popular modifications include replacing complementing Apple TV's front row interface with alternative media center software, including Plex, XBMC Media Center, and Bookshe. Though Bookshe installs and flicks watch instantly plugin, the Apple TV does not have enough processing power to run the Silverlight framework that the Netflix plugin depends on. Users have also upgraded the first generation's internal hard drive. A hardware hack allows the first generation of Apple TV to output color through composite video. For firmware version 3.0, the existing 2X hack involving a kernel module called Composite Kext. True 1080p playback and video output can be enabled on the first generation Apple TV by installing a Browards on Crystal HD PCIe card and version 10.0, Dharma, and later of XBMC running on Linux instead of the native Mac OS X 10.4X based operating system. This has been available since June 2010 and was originally created by Sam Nazorko. In March 2011, Nazorko released a GUI installer for both Linux and Windows platforms allowing quick installation of his minimal distribution. The distribution offers PVR support and AirPlay and still receives updates to this day. AirPlay video and photo streaming is now available on the first generation by installing the remote HD plugin, Plex or XBMC Media Center. Second Generation The Apple TV Second generation, is the first to have an operating system based on a version of iOS. Developers have applied iOS jailbreaking so that software unapproved by Apple that may void the warranty may be installed on this model of Apple TV. This can be accomplished by downloading the Apple TV's firmware from Apple servers, then using a custom firmware application like CZON Pass or PWNAGE tool to create a custom firmware. Users then connect their Apple TV to iTunes, place the Apple TV in DFU mode, and restore the custom firmware to the Apple TV. This custom firmware provides SSH support to the device where users may use APT to install software to the device, or a GUI version similar to Cydia called NITO TV which includes access to software drivers to enable the built-in Bluetooth functions. Currently there is a limited amount of Apple TV compatible software, however on January 20, 2011, the XBMC team released the first official version of XBMC Media Center for this second generation device. A recent limited thin client release of Plex Media Center has also been released. In February 2011, Greenpoise ONRC6 brought full untethered jailbreak support for second generation on iOS 4.2.1 with a simpler jailbreak method than C's ON Pass or PWNAGE tool. Third generation The Apple TV, third generation, was released in March 2012. Jailbreak of the third generation had proved to be more difficult than previous generations. However, there is currently a beta version of Snow 3rd that claims to jailbreak Apple TV 3, but analysis of the video seems to show it to be fake. The bootroom of Apple TV has been hardened to defend against the exploit used to jailbreak the previous generation of Apple TV. A bootroom level exploit is needed for a jailbreak because Apple TV disables its micro USB port until the device is fully booted. Although, according to Firecore LLC, there is a group of individuals working on something that could possibly lead to a third-generation Apple TV jailbreak. Plex Connect, giving Plex functionality, is currently available without a jailbreak for second and third generation. Third generation Rev A The Apple TV, third generation, Reverend A was released on January 28, 2013. 
just like the previous version of third generation, it has no boot room exploit and there are currently no jailbreaks available for this model, except for Plex Connect, as above. Limitations Functionality Apple TV does not contain a TV tuner, nor a personal video recorder. Both capabilities can be applied to the connected home computer through various third-party products, such as allowing PVR software to connect to iTunes and enable scheduled HDTV recordings to automatically play via Apple TV for playback. The front row interface lacks some iTunes functionality, including rating items, checking the account balance, adding funds to the account, synchronizing from more than one computer, full internet radio support, and games. The movie's search box only searches the iTunes store, not local hard drives and networks. Movies rented on Apple TV must be watched on Apple TV, unlike iTunes rentals, which can be transferred to any video-enabled iPod, iPhone or Apple TV. Movies purchased on Apple TV can be moved to a video-enabled iPod or iPhone via iTunes. Apple TV does not support the HDMI Consumer Electronics Control HDMI CEC, protocol for automatic control by TV remote. On the Apple TV, second generation, digital output audio is upsampled to 48 kHz, including lossless CD rips at 44.1 kHz. Although this is a higher frequency and the difference is not audible in most cases, it means the audio is not bit perfect which is often a goal for digital transmission of data. Former limitations Photos were required to be synced to the device until an iTunes update enabled streaming. The February 2008 release of the 2.0 take two software update allowed users to rent standard resolution or HD movies with Dolby Digital 5.1 surround. Previously, Apple TV had officially supported only Dolby Pro Logic Simulated 5.1, though the full 5.1 surround sound digital discrete worked if a 5.1 capable receiver was connected via the optical cable to Apple TV and the audio content was encoded as lossless. QuickTime and Apple TV did not ship with an AC3 codec, and iTunes Store content only supported 4.0 surround sound. News sites were reporting that some users had worked out how to add AC3, Dolby Digital, 5.1 channel support by hacking the unit. Before the 2.3 update, the Apple remote could control sound volume and front row navigation via a Macintosh computer, but only volume via Apple TV. Critics claimed that Apple TV's TV-based interface was cluttered, and difficult to browse or search for a specific movie, requiring flicks like cues and watched flags or dates. Apple released movie wish lists, video playlists, and watched flags in Apple TV software versions 2.1 through 2.4. The original Apple TV used the older QuickTime 7 engine, so it cannot play videos which use H264 sample aspect ratio, which requires QuickTime X. The second generation of Apple TV supports H264. Sales Apple TV first generation Within the first week of pre-sales in January 2007, Apple TV was the top pre-selling item at the Apple Store. Orders exceeded 100,000 units by the end of January and Apple began ramping up to sell over a million units before the 2007 holiday season. Analysts began calling it a DVD killer that could enable multiple services. Analysts also predicted that Apple could sell up to 1.5 million units in the first year. Besides the Apple Store, Best Buy was one of the first retailers to carry the device. Target and Costco followed shortly thereafter. Two months into sales, Forrester Research predicted that Apple would only sell a million Apple TV units, because consumers prefer advertisement-supported content over paid content. Forrester predicted that cable companies would be the clear winners over content providers such as the iTunes Store. Shortly after, Apple released YouTube functionality and Jobs stated that Apple TV was a DVD player for the Internet. Some market analysts predicted that YouTube on Apple TV provides a glimpse of this product's potential and its future evolution, 
but overall, analysts had mixed reactions regarding the future of Apple TV. Some negative reactions followed after Jobs referred to the device as a hobby, implying it was less significant than the Macintosh, iPod, and iPhone. In the fourth quarter of 2008, sales were triple that of the fourth quarter of 2007. In Apple's first quarter 2009 financial results conference call, acting chief executive Tim Cook stated that Apple TV sales increased three times over the same quarter a year ago. Cook mentioned that the movie rental business was working well for Apple, Apple would continue investment in movie rentals and Apple TV, but Apple TV is still considered a hobby for the company. Due to the growth of digital TV and consumers turning to Internet media services, an analyst predicted sales of 6.6 .6 million Apple TVs by the end of 2009. Apple TV Second Generation The second generation sold 250,000 units in the first two weeks it was available. On December 21, 2010, Apple announced that they had sold 1 million units. In the second fiscal quarter of 2011, it had topped 2 million in total sales, with 820,000 sold in that quarter alone. On January 24, 2012, Apple announced they had sold 1.4 million units in the first fiscal quarter of 2012, and 2.8 million units in all of fiscal year 2011. 4.2 million units through January 1, 2012. Apple TV Third Generation Tim Cook revealed at the All Things Digital conference in May 2012 that Apple has sold 2.7 million of the third generation model in 2012. In the Q4 FY 2012 earnings call, Engadget reported comments from Tim Cook that Apple had shipped 1.3 million Apple TV units in the fourth quarter, presumed to be third generation. Mac Observer reported statements by Tim Cook in the Q1 FY 2013 earnings call that Apple sold over 2 million Apple TV units in the December quarter, presumed to be third generation. These reports lead to a cumulative volume of the third generation device of 6 million units, as of January 1, 2013. On February 28, 2014 at Apple's shareholders meeting Apple CEO Tim Cook revealed that in 2013 Apple TV brought in $1 billion of revenue for Apple. Mac Mini Comparison Apple enthusiasts seeking an alternative to the Apple TV sometimes consider the Mac Mini hardware as a more powerful, albeit more expensive, solution for a home theater PC, HTPC, option. As a full-featured computer, it lacks the out-of-the-box simplicity and ease of use of the Apple TV. Unlike the Apple TV and other iOS devices, the Mac Mini must be authorized for fair play, reducing available authorizations for other computers. However, once configured for home theater applications, viewers were able to use the supplied remote control to activate and navigate front row, though other media management packages are still an option. Front Row was only available with Mac OS X 10.4 to 10.6, but was removed in Mac OS X Lion, 10.7 onwards. Advantages include expandable storage, support for multiple video and audio codecs, and access to third-party media management software. The Mac Mini Remote can also control volume for all applications including video and music. The Mac Mini can stream content from services like YouTube. Hulu and Netflix, using either a browser or one of several full-featured free HTPC applications like Plex and XBMC Media Center. The Apple TV must be hacked to add software such as Plex and XBMC Media Center, to partly compensate for the lack of browser-based functionality. Since this is not a stock setup, official software updates remove the hack and it could void the warranty. <laughs>